Stay tuned to the end of this video for different ways that you can make passive income on your farm from our sponsor Base Camp Leasing. Hey everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. Tax season has officially concluded, and that means that I have a pretty clear picture on what my farming finances look like for the year of 2018. Now to keep with tradition, I am going to walk you guys through uh, my biggest farm sales from the last year, what my biggest inputs were, or my biggest costs, and uh, at the end of this video I'm going to walk you guys through different ways that you can make income from your farm like we are trying to do. Last year I ran 127 acres total. That included 71 acres of corn. It, that ran an average of 204 bushels to the acre and I ran 56 acres of beans at 57 bushels to the acre. So my total crop sales last year were 62520 My cattle sales were $5,077. One thing that I do not include in these numbers are things such as uh, overhead for the cattle, uh, cattle feed, stuff like that. The reason being is because that's one of those exceptions where I work for my parents and in return I get an amount of feed for my cattle and uh, since I am expanding my herd this year I had to put 26 acres into hay uh, to provide my own feed. So a lot of people uh, have asked you know, if I get paid on the farm. Uh, I do not get paid for working on the farm every day and by providing me feed that is one pay way that my parents uh, pay Travis and I. So I had $5,077 worth of cattle sales last year. I keep, I have kept all of my heifers um, up until this year. And that brings me a total last year of $67,597 in sales. So last year my spray and fertilizer costs were $12,023. That includes the side dressing costs. Um, my seed cost was $10,017 which brings me a total input cost of $22,040. Now my rent was $33,225. Um, this may or may not be roughly accurate, and the reason being is because I don't want to provide my 100% accurate um, what we pay in rent because I know that there are people watching who would love to know what we pay in rent. Um, so this is roughly what my rent is. Um, all the numbers are 100% accurate. I just moved some things around. Um, to compensate. So that brings my total income to $12,332 um, of last year. Now that really doesn't seem like all that much, does it? Not really. Uh, the re biggest reason is because there is still 2,005 bushels of soybeans sitting in the small bin over at the main farm. So depending on what that sells for, uh, that could be roughly another $15,000 uh, worth in income. So that's more than um, that is more than what I sold last year or what my income was last year. So that would bring it up to roughly 20, 27,000 in farm income. Now the thing with my farm income is that I always spin around and invest it back into the farm. Uh, the reason I do this is because I'm trying to increase my income from the farm. And by doing so, uh, I can increase my cattle herd, I can buy equipment such as the truck, and help keep more money on the farm. And uh, that's one of the reasons that they always say invest in yourself, invest in yourself. Um, because one way or another you will, will make your money back. And I'll get to the truck shortly. So far last year my income was roughly around 27000 With the truck this year and with my calves next year, um, my farm income is going to gradually increase. It has been increasing um, gradually uh, over the last few years. Uh, if you watched my previous finances video, um, I did a marketing program that, where my crops were marketed for me and I got seven dollars for uh, like 2,000 bushels of my soybeans, which when it reflected back on the costs of last year uh, or the year, year prior to 2018, 2017, um, I pretty much made nothing from the farm. So I didn't do that program this year. I did a better job of marketing my own crops and it's really starting to shine through in my income because I went from pretty much making nothing in 2017 um, to 12,000 last year plus another 15,000 whenever I sell the soybeans that are in that bin. Now I'm actually pretty excited to share some of the numbers on Big Red with you guys. So if you've been following us since last fall, you'll know that last fall I went out and purchased a semi and a commodity hopper trailer, Big Red. And I hauled with it some this spring after Dad and I spent all winter working on it to fix it back up. 
and we paid $23,000 for the truck itself and in the end we stuck about another $7,000 in it so that brings us around $30,000 that we need to pay off with the truck. So depending on how large of a farm you are it's really going to depend on whether it's smarter to buy your own truck or uh, just have someone else haul it for you. But there are different options out there. Uh, I know my some of my cousins uh, who actually went out and bought a shorter truck uh, for a lesser cost, which I was actually looking at doing, uh, but for the amount of bushels that we send out, I would have been hauling a crazy amount of loads down to the down to the river. So all in all, we have about thirty thousand in the truck. Um, as we are running it under the farm, it's about five hundred dollars in licensing and another four to five hundred in insurance. So about another thousand dollars every year, uh, just in licensing and insurance. Now, if you're looking for different ways to make money from the farm, one thing you could do was to go and get your CDL, which I am looking at doing. Um, the big reason, because by having your CDL, you can haul for other farmers. Um, you can increase the amount that you make from a truck, and uh, it makes it look like that much sweeter of a deal. So for $30,000, um, we have a very workable truck. She runs beautifully, and I am very happy with our investment. And um, if I were to consider hauling for other farmers, I would have to get insurance. I don't know what the insurance would be if I was hauling commercially, but I would imagine it would be at least twice as expensive. And the licensing for every year um, would go from about $500 every year up to about $2,500, I think, is the yearly license renewal for a commercial truck. So that's one thing you got to look at. Is it worth it uh, to license your truck commercially? Um, or is it just smarter, you know, if you can't find enough business to haul for other farmers just to use it for yourself? Um, it's just another thing to look at if you're looking for more ways to stay on the farm. Um, as smaller farmers, we do have to look for different ways to make income because there are good years and then there are mediocre years. And having off-farm income really, really helps. So that's part of my goal with this video is to tell you guys, show you guys what we can expect to make off of the truck. I've been meaning to do this video for a while um, and to talk about another topic that you can do to make uh, passive farm income, which I'm going to talk about next. So off of Big Red, we had about 5.9 miles to the gallon, which I was actually really satisfied with. I think that is really good, especially for the amount of sitting around and while we were loading it, um, the amount of times where we just let it sit and run um, while I was working on it. I think that was pretty good. Um, depending on how I drive it, that could go up or down. I'll just have to wait and see. But I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like this fall. So it's 21.8 miles just down to the elevator. And that is how I got my miles to the gallon um, after hauling the corn this spring. That equals to about $22.76 per load that I spent in fuel. Now if I was hauling about 950 bushels uh, per load and I was making 17 cents, uh, per bushel off of it, that would be roughly $150. So after that, we have about two cents, uh, two and a half cents per bushel uh, in fuel. So if I charge 17 cents to a haul corn from the farms, um, I would be making roughly 14 and a half cents per bushel uh, for income after the fuel. So $30,000, um, if I'm looking to pay off the truck in a few years, uh, typically when you take out a loan on something like a truck, you want to pay it off in about, I would want to pay it off in about three years. So if we're hauling around 100,000 bushels per year, um, I'm just going to use this number just because it's a nice number to work with. I'm not really sure what I'm going to end up hauling with or how many bushels I'm going to end up hauling, um, but let's just use 100,000. If you're a farm that hauls out 100,000 bushels per year and you charge 17 cents per bushel, you're going to make 17,000 bushels or $17,000 in income before fuel by hauling crops. And um, after fuel, you're looking at roughly 14,400 per bushel or $14,400 um, income for 100,000 bushels of crops that you're hauling. So if you're hauling 200,000 per year, then you're looking at maybe like 20 to 30,000, which would be good because if we were hauling out 200,000 bushels a year, um, I would actually pay off the truck 
in a, a little over a year, I think. So that is one thing that I'm looking at for the truck. Um, Big Red will pay itself off if we haul out an average of 100,000 bushels every year. Uh, Big Red will pay itself off in roughly two and a half years, which really makes sense, don't you think? Because if you're investing with something and you're going to make your money back in two, two and a half, three years, um, everything that you make after that is pure profit. Um, less anything that you have to repair on the truck or anything like that. Um, will Big Red be a good truck for the long haul? We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, she does have a few problems that we have to work on, like a leaky radiator. Uh, the engine actually is leaking oil, but it's really not that bad as it looks. Um, I would say that the radiator is a little bit more pressing, but we could haul even this fall yet and not really worry about it too much. Um, but it's definitely something that we need to get to work on. And we're looking at doing it this spring, um, or this summer, but I'm not totally sure if we're going to be able to get to it just because we have to do work to the combine, which you'll probably hear or see some videos about this summer. So um, that is what we're looking at for the truck. I'm looking at making my money back on it in two to three years. As long as she doesn't quit before then, uh, I should make my money back and be uh, pretty happy. So now we're going to move on and talk about land leasing. If you're like most farmers, you're probably looking for every single source of income that you can use to increase your bottom line. That's where Base Camp Leasing comes in. Base Camp Leasing is a leading hunting lease network with the best leasing process, best leases, and best hunters in the industry. Base Camp Leasing is a single quick and efficient resource for a hunter looking for hunting ground, and it's an easy process to get started. I requested a, qu a quote for 115 acres on this farm, and I got an answer really quick and I was quoted roughly $3,500 a year just for leasing out our one pasture to hunters. Something like this is definitely something to look at if you're looking for more ways to make income from your farm. I know that there are a lot of farmers out there who are looking for uh, different ways to make income. Uh, I've known of this, but I never really knew how to get started in it, and base camp leasing is a really good place to start. So if you're interested, go down into the description. There's a link down there where you can find out more about base camp leasing. Some of the benefits of leasing your land's hunting rights through base camp leasing are that it is a significant and passive income source. Uh, you'll get premium insurance coverage and you'll have hunters that will help deter trespassing. You'll be able to reduce wildlife causing crop damage by reducing their populations and you'll get a professionally written lease that will protect both the landowner and the hunter. The price that you'll be able to get by leasing out your land through base camp leasing really just depends on what kind of land you're leasing out. Uh, is it pasture ground? Is it field ground? Does it have lots of t high quality timber on it? And what are the wildlife populations like on it? Uh, those three conditions, as well as where you're located, will be heavily factored in to what the price will be for what, or what you would get, which is why they ask that you send them a quote with the acreage and where it's at with a satellite image of what you want to lease out because it helps them get a clear picture on what kind of land that you're trying to lease out. So for us, we have 115 acres of high quality timberland in the pasture that we can still use year round for pasture. Uh, the cows can be out in it all the time. Uh, we can still farm it like we normally would. Uh, there would just be hunters that would be allowed to come onto the land to lease it for X amount every year. That is another option you may consider if you're looking for another income source. Uh, there's an unlimited number of things that you can do. It's just finding how to get started, especially with land leasing. Um, like I said, I never really knew where to get started and by having base camp leasing here, um, we're going to be able to figure out, or this is something that we want to do and is this a route we want to go down, uh, especially for the amount of pasture that we have. Uh, we have hundreds of acres of pasture and it would be a very good source of income for us to be able to lease that out to hunters while we can still farm it and let our cows out there year round. So that is a way that you can make extra income off of the farm. In this video I briefly discussed what my finances were for the year of 2018 and different routes that I'm going down trying to increase the income on the farm not only for myself but for my parents and brother as well and land leasing is another one of those ways that we can do that. So that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching, guys. Be sure to check out all of our other videos. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, All How Farms Work. And again, if you want more info on base camp leasing, go down to the description. They have a section for frequently asked questions. Uh, if you have any other concerns, just check out the link.
With that, I'll see you next time.